improves age-related blurry near vision. Wait, what? It sounded like you just said an eye drop that may help you see up close. I did. Use Vuity with caution in night driving and hazardous activities in poor light. Also, if your vision is not clear, do not drive or use machinery. Contact your doctor immediately if you have sudden vision loss. Most common side effects are headache and eye redness. Ask your eye doctor about Vuity and see for yourself. Learn how to sign up and save at myviewityPoints.com. Tomorrow on E.T., only one show is sitting down with the GOAT, the man himself, Tom Brady. Tom talks football, family, and his new Hollywood goal. I was so nervous. I got out there on the, no. I swear to God, I was Whatever. so nervous. I, they said action, and I, my, my, I went completely blank. Plus, only E.T.'s backstage with Michael Buble at his final Sin gotta, City shows. I got to go catch a plane That's right, right now to go do. see you. And yeah. Cheryl Crow gives us an exclusive happening now. It's a guilty verdict for a woman who was on trial for a murder for hire plot, but the case isn't over yet. We'll take you inside the courtroom and explain. Protests continuing in the wake of the leak of the Supreme Court draft decision over Roe v. Wade. How abortion rights suddenly is playing a role in the midterm elections. And we have one more opportunity for a few showers and thunderstorms before we crank up the weekend heat. We'll be back in a bit to chat about it. The News at 5 starts right now. A guilty verdict today in a dramatic murder for hire trial. Angelica Navarro de Paz convicted today of solicitation capital murder by a Bear County jury. Navarro de Paz didn't deny she'd hired an undercover cop to kill her boyfriend's sister, but said she had a reason. It was to protect her family. Erica Hernandez on the next decision this jury will weigh in on. We, the jury, find the defendant, Angelica Navarro de Paz, guilty of the offense of solicitation to commit capital murder as charged in the indictment. No reaction from Angelica Navarro de Paz as the verdict was read. Over the last week and a half, dramatic testimony was heard in court. It took a jury a little over three hours to deliberate. After a short break, the punishment phase began. The first to take the stand for the state was the victim in this case, Anayeli Mendoza Flores. With the help from a translator, she talked about how she met Navarro de Paz in Mexico in 2014. She said Navarro de Paz asked her if she wanted to be smuggled into the United States. She was going to help me come over here. So I started receiving instructions from her as far as I, how I was going to get here. Once she was smuggled into the United States, she says Navarro de Paz picked her up in San Antonio and allowed her to stay in one of her rental properties and reportedly asked her to pay $40,000. Mendoza Flores also talked about how this entire situation has affected her life. After testimony is complete in this punishment phase, it'll be up to the jury to decide what her sentence is, which can range anywhere from 5 to 99 years or life in prison. At the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. In New at 5, we now know the name of the man killed at an apartment complex last night. He is 30-year-old Rafael Jesus Lopez. The question San Antonio police now need answers to is, Who's the killer? San Antonio police found Lopez on Bullmore Drive and Dollar Hyde on the southeast side about nine last night. They say he was talking with a group of men in the parking lot when someone pulled out a gun. Lopez shot in the head, taken to the hospital. He did not survive. At last check, no one has been arrested. San Antonio police are looking for a beige colored Hyundai Elantra with broken windows that may have been at that crime scene. Another man who died on his way to the hospital early yesterday morning also identified today. He is 30-year-old Corwin Davis. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, Davis was shot in the head at a home on Loop 107. A woman who was at the home at the time was being questioned, but at last checked, no one's been arrested. A man in critical condition after he was stabbed early this morning at I-10 and West Commerce Streets. The victim told investigators about 4.30 this morning he was arguing with the suspect then he was stabbed. The victim waved down a VIA officer, gave a description of the suspect. 
that man was found and taken into custody. San Antonio police looking for a driver who hit a bicyclist overnight and didn't stop to help. This was in a neighborhood called Fair Meadows near I-35 and Palo Alto Road. The victim was delivering ready to eat meals in the area when he was run down. A witness told investigators they saw a gray SUV hit a bicyclist, but then the driver just kept going. No SAPD Rather, SAPD is right now trying to track that driver down. It's San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help in solving a robbery. It happened back on April 2nd. They say the man on your screen robbed a Macy's store at Ingram Park Mall. That suspect entered the store and just began putting items in a bag. He then left without paying for any of them. A loss prevention security guard tried to confront the man. The man pulled out a gun and asked him to step back. That man then took off in a blue Jeep. If you have any information on who this guy is, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Today, the future of Roe v. Wade looking bleak after an unprecedented leak of a Supreme Court draft decision that suggested that the 1973 law will be struck down. Now, as primaries across the country are underway, how this news might impact those elections? ABC's Alex Prochet is more from Washington. From the steps of the highest court in the country to the U.S. heartland, news of the leaked Supreme Court draft opinion dated February 10th reverberating across the nation. The 67-page draft opinion was written by Justice Samuel Alito. Its authenticity was confirmed by the court and appears to reach a clear conclusion. Roe v. Wade must be overruled and that 1973 ruling was egregiously wrong from the start. Chief Justice Roberts, who confirmed the authenticity of the leaked draft first published by Politico, insists it's just a first draft and not a final opinion of the justices. President Biden is describing this as a radical decision, and Vice President Kamala Harris saying this. How dare tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body. But today, states across the country aren't waiting for the final word from the Supreme Court. They're racing to get ahead of it. In Oklahoma, abortion is now banned as early as six weeks into pregnancy. The bill signed overnight by the governor effective immediately. One woman says she was told by one state clinic that she has to drive to Kansas to get an appointment. She's like, you know what, we can't do it here, but I can help you find a different facility. It's going to be in a different state. Democrats now scrambling to offset the restrictive anti-abortion laws already passed. Connecticut's governor promising to sign a bill to safeguard abortions and protect providers from out-of-state lawsuits. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, at least 26 states will likely ban or severely restrict access to abortions. The president now using his platform to push candidates ahead of the midterm elections who support abortion rights. Biden saying if the court does overturn Roe and this issue goes to the states, it will fall on the nation's elected officials at all levels of government to protect a woman's right to choose. President Biden also warning that this decision could extend beyond the issue of abortion, curbing other freedoms with primary season officially underway. Indiana and Ohio kicking off yesterday, and that messaging is going to be an issue front and center all the way through November. In San Antonio ISD's new superintendent, Dr. Jaime Aquino, went on a school tour today. It started at Mark Twain Elementary. Dr. Aquino officially started his new role as superintendent yesterday. He was once a teacher, has experience in leadership roles in the Los Angeles and Denver school districts. He says he wants to turn San Antonio ISD into a destination district for families and educators. Today, though, his priority was visiting with students. Another resource helping our veterans, Bear County District, or rather Precinct 2, holding an expo and a job fair for military vets and their families. It all took place at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall. Not only were there people able to connect veterans with jobs, but they were also able to provide details when it comes to programs for health care and housing. This is the second year the event has taken place, and the plan is to bring it back each year to come. It's a work of art, a mural finding a new home, moving from downtown to pre-K for San Antonio's West Campus. The City of San Antonio's Department of Arts and Culture and Pre-K for SA held a ceremony for the dedication of Interwoven today. That piece of art was made by San Antonio artist Jennifer Koshman. It's called Interwoven. It depicts five refugee and immigrant women from Afghanistan, Turkey, Honduras, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Haiti. 
They're all envisioned as working as seamstresses who the artists met here in San Antonio. Jennifer hopes this art inspires students. Now a whole new generation of kids and people from a wide variety of backgrounds here can now see it too and think about all the uh, people that we portray in the in the mural. The mural previously on display in 2018 at the Houston Street Garage as part of a tricentennial celebration and it was deinstalled in 2020. This will be the murals permanent home. I want to give you a look outside with your traffic authority. You can see a bit of a backup of traffic. This is at 410 at Fredericksburg. Traffic leaving town, a little bit congested, but for the most part, everything's moving along. Warm, but not too hot out there today. 88, the high temperature, that's four degrees above average. You look at the readings right now. For the most part, we are in the mid to upper 80s. Panna Maria, Eagle Pass, checking in at 88. Leon Springs, 86 degrees, along with Seguin and Windcrest right now at 85. We're watching for a few thunderstorms closer to the border this evening, and even the potential for some severe weather closer to Del Rio. Otherwise, the rest of us, partly to mostly cloudy, and then a few stray showers possible later tonight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. We've got some activity in Mexico. It's headed its way toward the Rio Grande. We're going to take a closer look at this and our storm chances even for tonight and tomorrow before we crank up the heat for the weekend. I'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Adam. You know, when it comes to borrowing, you could say money is no longer free. That's after the Federal Reserve announced Wednesday it is increasing interest rates by a half point, the biggest hike in 22 years. In the meantime, the Biden administration poised to reduce the nation's deficit as a way to help fight inflation. That's what they hope to do anyway. Gloria Pazmino explains in this story. The Federal Reserve announced Wednesday it's pulling back economic support, raising interest rates by a half a percentage point, a first in more than two decades. Inflation is much too high and we understand the hardship it is causing. The policies outlined the central bank strategy to cool down the economy as rapid inflation continues. That means your borrowing costs are likely about to get higher. Mortgage rates, credit card interest, auto and student loans could all increase. We're on track to cut the federal deficit by another, another $1.5 trillion by the end of this fiscal year. The biggest decline in a single year ever in American history. Bringing down the deficit could help ease pressures brought on by inflation. The Biden administration is under pressure to reduce inflation as midterm elections approach and Republicans seek to capitalize on voters' concerns about the economy. The average American household is spending an extra $5,200 this year, $433 per month in extra expenses just from inflation. They don't get more goods and services with all that extra money. While the labor market remains strong, the Fed's increase could slow down hiring and wage growth. Americans are earning more, but basic costs like gas, food, and electricity have all increased since last year. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. It is almost Cinco de Mayo, a day to recognize Mexico's defeat of the French at the Battle of Puebla. And that celebration usually involves food and drink. So next, we're going to show you how to get the best of cultural dishes with healthier options. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's a look at some of what's coming your way on the news at 6 o'clock today. A restaurant passport program. This was created by the owner of a local Filipino restaurant. The goal here is to raise awareness of local spots owned by members of the Asian American Pacific Islander community. We're going to explain how this works and how you can enjoy some of these spots and save some money if you take part in this. Plus, we've got questions. We're talking to San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg in our KSAT Q&A today, and we'll be asking about that proposal for the Spurs to play some home games in Austin. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. Thank you so much, Myra. Uh, new at 5, Cinco de Mayo. It's a day to celebrate Mexican culture with parades and parties and a lot of food and drinks. It's fun. But as 12 inches size, Marilyn Morris shows us there are ways to spice up the menu, but also keep it healthy, too. Cheers. 
Celebrations in the Montiel home are rich in flavor and tradition. Very squishy. For Saul and Eliana, cooking is a family affair. They make rice and beans two different ways, Mexican and Dominican style. Besides being delicious, rice and beans can also be really healthy. Black beans, pinto beans, kidney beans, they're all packed with antioxidants and fiber, plus the minerals, potassium and magnesium. White rice is often fortified with B vitamins, but for maximum nutrition, you could choose brown rice. Combined, brown rice and beans pack a powerful protein punch. Boost flavor with garlic, onions, and herbs instead of ham hocks or bacon. Mexican flavors feature other healthy basics too, like avocados, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and chilies. You can cut back on sodium by making your own fresh dips, like guacamole or salsa, seasoned to your taste. Ta -da. Whoa! La tortilla! Tortilla! And which tortilla to wrap it up? Corn is a whole grain, while flour versions are typically made with refined wheat flour, which lacks nutrients. And don't forget the frozen margarita. Not all home blenders can create the concoction. CR recommends this instant ace for about $120. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Before you head out to the grocery store, though, you're going to probably want to check out a link that's on our website. It shows you the healthier options for things like tortilla chips, salsa, and guacamole. Just look for this story on our website. All right, live cam right now, 85 degrees out there. Are some parts of our viewing area experiencing rain or will they? I do think uh, Valverde County will yeah. get in on some uh, heavy rainfall, maybe even a severe thunderstorm and the possibility, the outside chance of a quick spin up of a tornado. Uh, parts of Valverde County are included in a tornado watch box and we'll get to some of that in a bit. First, our headline: some evening border storms, 30% chance for everybody else tomorrow, then sunny and hot. As we get into this weekend, we're talking record challenging heat. OK, let's take a look at the radar right now and you see the activity, a lot of lightning associated with it. It is lit up if you're watching from Valverde and you're looking off to the west. Boy, I know you see that supercell thunderstorm in Mexico as that's heading eastward. I still think it has another hour or so before it could even drift close to Del Rio. Most of it looks like it's going to be passing north of the city of Del Rio, but there have been some recent indications here uh, lately with some of the latest scans that Del Rio could actually get clipped by this. And as this moves to the east and northeast, there is the potential for some large hail within it. And as I said before, conditions are favorable for maybe a brief isolated tornado from one of the storms uh, this evening somewhere along the border, particularly parts of Alverde County turning off the lightning and you see the blacks and the purples that indicates some of the hail within this and it does look like the hail core has kind of spread out and maybe weakened just a little bit over the past 30 minutes or so but this is moving to the northeast at about 30 miles per hour so we'll try to time this out for the limited communities that are out there at least the leading edge of this pushing to the east northeast at about 30 miles per hour there we go and here's a list of those communities for you Amistad Acres, 5.31, Amistad Village at 5.45 p.m., Devil Shores at 5.59 p.m. And of course, these are just rough estimates, but that's when we can expect it. Otherwise, there is some for development farther to the south. We have to watch that for Maverick County and other areas along the Rio Grande. OK, here's the bigger picture. I mentioned the tornado watch box that's in effect, and here's here it is shown in red. Just parts of northwestern Edwards County, northern Valverde County, and two other watch boxes for parts of West and North Texas. So an active afternoon and evening. These are valid all the way through 10 p.m. We've got the conditions. We've got the wind shear in place to where these severe storms. You see the yellow boxes that pop up indicating severe storms. They could briefly develop a tornado or two. The rest of us. Just a few light showers possible here and there later tonight. Here's our future cast. There's a lot of energy in the atmosphere, and I do think it could be enough to kickstart just a few showers uh, through basically 10 p.m., midnight, and then even on into the early morning hours. For the morning commute, don't be surprised if you have some areas of moderate rain and then even some wet roadways. Don't pay so close attention to the exact placement the computer puts on these showers just the mere intensity and the fact that it's actually indicating them. Then by tomorrow afternoon, not so much in terms of showers, but about 30% coverage of thunderstorms. And at that point, some of them could become strong to severe. We're going to be on the tail end of the activity as usual. So we'll be 
just on the edge of it. So there's that 30% temperatures right now. We are in the 80s to near 90. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast 74 in the morning tomorrow. Hit or miss showers, then 30% chance of afternoon thunderstorms making it into the mid 80s for high temperatures. And overall, we're looking sunny and hot this weekend back up near 100. That's record challenging heat. Smoking hot. Thank you. All right. Talk about a rough start to the to an NBA playoff series. The playoffs are supposed to be more physical, but Absolutely. it's getting a little well, it's getting out of hand. When we come back, it's another flagrant foul in this series, and this one hurts in more ways than one. And the NFL headed to Germany coming up. We are just two games into the Western Conference semifinals between the Grizzlies and the Warriors, and we've already had two ejections. The second coming last night, just three minutes into the game. That's when the Grizzlies Dylan Brooks chased down Gary Payton the second, hit him in the head, knocking him to the floor where he broke his left elbow. Here's a better look at it as he misses the ball completely. Connects with his head, knocking Peyton to the court. Brooks is tossed. Peyton has to leave the game as well with a fractured elbow. Don't know when he'll be back. After failing to get the game-winning basket to fall at the buzzer in game one, Ja Morant made up for it in game two. He tied his playoff career high of 47 points. 15 of those came in the closing moments of the fourth quarter, including a jumper with just under two minutes to play to put the Grizzlies ahead to stay in the 106-101 victory to even up this best of seven series at one win apiece. I don't know if it was intentional, but it, it, it was dirty. And, um, <clears throat> you know, playoff basketball is going to, it's supposed to be physical. You know, everybody's going to compete. Everybody's going to fight for everything. But there's a code in this league. There's a code that players follow um, where you, you never put a guy's season slash career in jeopardy by taking somebody out in midair and clubbing him across the head and ultimately fracturing Gary's elbow. This is a guy who's been toiling the last six years trying to make it in this league. Um, finally found a home, just, you know, playing his butt off this year. Um, in the playoffs, you know, this should be the time of, of his life. And uh, the guy comes in and Wax him across the head in midair. He broke the coat. Dylan Brooks broke the coat. That's how I see it. Now, like the Grizzlies, the Boston Celtics also got even with the de defending NBA champion Milwaukee Bucks in the second game of the Eastern Conference semifinal series. The Celtics storm out of the gate. Jalen Brown connects from downtown. Boston's already up 18 to 3 right there. Celtics add to that lead. In the second is Jason Tatum for the three. Gives Boston a 25 point lead at halftime. The Bucks do close the gap to 13 late in the fourth, thanks to Giannis Antetokounmpo, but it wasn't enough. Jalen Brown led Boston 30. Tatum right behind him with 29. Celtics even up this series at 1 0, 109, 86. Pro football coverage. Powered by by Davis Law Firm. The NFL announcing today that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will face the Seattle Seahawks in the first ever regular season game to be played in Germany, Munich, to be more specific, on November the 13th. They're also going to have three games in London, one in Mexico, so they're going international this year. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The International Football League. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. This is a traffic trouble stop. The traffic is stopped. It's down to one lane on I-35 by Bamsey, and there is a huge police presence right here. Yeah, we're working to get more information on exactly what is happening here. Of course, we'll bring it to you on the news at 6, but this may be where it started. You can see a number of vehicles that are off to the side of the road. It does not look like a traffic accident. It looks as if some sort of incident occurred here. We'll have more coming up in 30 minutes.